Hey everyone, depending on what channel this is on, this is either Kevin T. Rodriguez or as I'm known in other circles as the Apptrepreneur. This is not a video I plan to make and it's not one that I'm, that's going to have a whole lot of polish. There's going to be a lot of videos like this today, most of which are more poetic, better edited, better shot. I'm using a cell phone. They'll have Nikon 4000s or whatever the heck it's called. But, you know, sometimes something happens and you just feel the need to say something about it. Even if it's not particularly intelligent. Um, Stan Lee died today. It's November 12th, 4.33 p.m. I found this out a couple hours ago and, you know, I was working so it was kind of hard to process it at the time. Work, work was hard too when you heard that. And, you know, I, when I heard the news, I didn't want to really believe it, to be honest. Yeah, I know. He was 95. He, yeah, I know. He's had a good long life. Yeah, I think to a certain extent, most of us fa Marvel fans have kind of just been waiting for it. We knew that we probably were getting pretty close to having fewer days ahead of him than with him than we had before, and we were trying to prepare ourselves, but it still doesn't make it easier. I was introduced to many of Stan Lee's creatures, characters and creations, as most people are, through comics and TV shows. I think the first... I think Spider-Man was probably the third superhero I was made aware of. The first being Superman, the next being Batman. And thanks to the Spider-Man comics, I was also introduced to other of his creations. Daredevil, the Fantastic Four, Captain America, Silver Surfer, the Incredible Hulk, the Punisher. Um... It wasn't introduced to Captain Marvel until years later. Um, the Avengers. I I remember reading all of these comics, as most kids do, starry-eyed and kind of hoping that, or dreaming, I should say. Wouldn't it be nice to be a superhero? Wouldn't it be nice to have this power? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to do this for people? And you get into countless silly um, arguments against your with your friends, like who would win in a fight, Spider Man or Hulk, or you know, would it be Batman or Captain America? Ironically, I, I think we got an official answer to that because if I remember, there was a DC versus Marvel event, and I think Batman did defeat Captain America that one time. So it's nice to know that that <laughs> nice to know how we had an answer to that. Growing up in his comics, um, I think he was like the first comic creator that I was really fully aware of. Um, this is partly because he would do interviews all the time. And he had a very energetic personality. I remember even thinking like, one day I want to meet him. I want to meet that man. I want to shake his hand. I want to say thank you for creating um, all the characters. I was thankfully fortunate enough to have met him. A few times, actually. Um, the first time was I, was 2004, or was it 2005? I think it was actually 2005, at Comic-Con, where I met him at a signing for this. This was the first thing of his, of mine that he signed. I remember having in the back of my mind, I wanted to thank him for the characters and stuff, but as I'm sitting in line, and it kind of zigzags this way so you can hear what other people are asking him I realized how many people said how much they love his characters and he was always gracious always thankful and I didn't really know um what to say to him when it became my turn I realized to just compliment him and thank him for creating the characters would seem a little silly at that point so I got up to him and, um, 18-year-old me, <laughs> I buckled under the pressure. I, I 
couldn't think of anything else to say except so busy day and he said yeah it's busy but I'm not too busy for you I mean it was just so he, he was so nice that um I then I just ended up saying like could I shake your hand sir and he was like, absolutely, and he shook my hand, and he posed, I have this picture, one of the several pictures I have of him, really, at this point. I walked away, and that was my first meeting with Stan Lee. It wasn't much of an exchange, to be honest, but I was nonetheless very, very happy to have had it. A few years later, um, Viz Media made a big announcement for Shonen Jump, they announced that they were having a collaboration of sorts. Stan Lee would be teaming up with the creator of Shaman King to create a new series for Shonen Jump called Ultimo. And I was at another Comic Con, and for the first time ever, I think Stan Lee was at the Viz Media booth. And so, they... I met him again, along with, uh, what, sorry, what's his name? Hiroyuki Takai. So this one actually has both their signatures on it. And this time, um, I had, was a little bit more confident, having already met him. Um, I actually remember saying, welcome to the world of manga, Mr. Lee. And he was like, Thank you. I'm always happy to join any club. The anime community has been very nice. And I did not get a picture with him this time. Now that was more because um, the Kai, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Japanese um, people tend to be very camera shy sometimes, was a very camera shy person. So this was actually one event where they didn't allow pictures. But that's fine. I got to meet him a second time. Then there was the third time, and it was actually just a few months later, believe it or not, Viz Media was still pushing Ultimo, and they were still sponsoring events for um, the Ultimo series. Now, Takai wasn't there this time. It was just Stan Lee, but it was at a Barnes & Noble. And I went, and I have another picture, as you can see, and it was... and. It was like, I'm trying to think what I'm saying. I said, it's so good to see you. I just saw you a few months ago. And he's like, really? Well, I'm glad you could join me again. It was very, again, these are all very short conversations. You know, you kind of go up, you meet, you shake hands, all that jazz. You know, got another picture. The last time I met Stan Lee, it was at Amiibo. In Hollywood I was going because the Russo brothers who had directed Captain America the Winter Soldier were there they were doing a signing and so I wanted to get their their signatures and I did it was unannounced but Stan Lee did show up and that was a complete surprise did not expect to be able to see him again this was a few years ago I think now, whether it was prophetic or something, but I just, I kind of felt that maybe this time, even if he's heard it a million times, I should actually say something. Because in hindsight, I had now met the man three times and had failed to say anything significant to him. And I don't know, I kind of felt like I was wasting his time almost. I know it sounds weird, but I kind of felt that way. So, I was thinking about, this time I want to say something prophetic. I want to say something very, very t genuinely moving. And I got to him, and I said, I actually didn't know what to say at first. He was like, how you doing, sir? And I said, I'm doing fine. And then I said, you know, Mr. Lee, this is actually the fourth time we've met. You probably don't remember me. 
I've never said anything important, and I always kind of hoped I would. So I guess I'll just say this. I guess I'll just finally say it. I, I know you've heard it before, but thank you for creating the characters and giving me many childhood memories. And thank you for being here tonight. And he, he laughed and said, you know, I never get tired of hearing it. I, it's like, you just never get tired of hearing how much you matter to people, how much your creations touched you. So thank you for telling me that. And then he was like, where do you want me to sign? And I said, you know what? I'll, why don't you sign right there at the top? And that was the last time I saw Stan Lee. Of course, in a way, I saw him again, along with millions of other people. Because he had all those cameos in all those movies. I just saw him... He just had a cameo in Ant-Man and the Wasp. He just had a cameo in Teen Titans Go to the Movie. Apparently, there's a few more cameos that have already been filmed for future of Marvel movies, so we might be seeing more of him still. He's in the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. And... See, even... When he's gone, I want to say something profound about his work and what he has, his works has, have meant to me and probably millions of people. But I don't think there is something prophetic that can be said about Stan Lee and his body of creations. I mean, I've been complaining fairly recently on my website that the market is oversaturated with superhero movies, that there's too many of them, that I wish people would watch other things. And I still think that's true. But you know what? There's another aspect to this that seems pretty fitting. The fact that all those movies and those characters bring so much joy to all these people, that there is a glut of superhero movies, that the comics are read more than they are. The fact that superheroes were many of our introductions to the world of comics and without the introduction, maybe we wouldn't read things like Watchmen or Bone or um, Dragon Ball Z. The fact that his work still inspires, the fact that people still love the characters, and it doesn't really matter what their age is. They, they are as young as four and five. They're as old as 89. He... It does make him a real-life superhero because those stories inspire people. And when he wrote those stories, the reason they connect is because he was one of the first to make the weirdos and the freaks, the good guys, the people we wanted to be. I think that's one of the reasons the outcasts were the first to be drawn to his work. And soon other people realize, yeah, you know what? The weirdos are kind of cool, too. It's sad to think that he's not going to be there anymore. I mean, again, we knew he had to go at some point. Time takes us all. He was always so energetic, though. I think we kind of always hoped that maybe, maybe he would just live forever in a way. But you know what? His legacy will keep him around. His cameos in the movies and the TV shows will still be there. His characters are not going to die. And if you're on Facebook and YouTube today, there's people sharing photos and videos, all this stuff. And he's also one of the few creators that Whenever they say, don't meet your heroes, that wasn't true with Stan Lee. He, I've met several celebrities that I'd wanted to meet for a long time, and yeah, a lot of them do disappoint. They are just human. But it was actually a genuine pleasure to see Stan Lee every single time. So, it's going to be hard 
it's going to be a hard couple days. But, you know, I, as I was driving home, thinking about it, I'm thinking about the, um, about that song from The Fox and the Hound where Todd gets dropped off in the woods. And the song in the background says, Goodbye may seem forever, farewell seems like the end. But in, but in my heart are memories. And there you'll always be. And I think it's safe to say Stan Lee, both the man and his works, will live in all of our hearts for many, many years. And we will just remember him. So, so, Mr. Lee, I'm grateful I got to meet you four times. I thank you once more for your creations. And I salute you, Excelsior. A hundred years from now, if somebody should bring up my name, if, if it would still be around, it would be nice if people say, geez, I, I thought he was a good writer. His stories gave me a lot of pleasure. That's what people tell me now, and it's the best thing any writer can ever hear.